Once you experience true high and sober, you'll never find other ways to get high again. You'll no longer be interested in instant pleasures and rudimentary levels of highs. This video is for those who genuinely want to unlock their potential and elevate themselves. And that's the primary goal of this channel. I call this a way to an indomitable highest spirit. In today's world, there are too many products we can easily have access to trick our minds, such as alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, natural and chemical ones, psychoactive drugs, etc. But the state of sobriety is the only way to unlock your true potential, and here's why it is very vital to keep it that way. Since I was a kid, I didn't smoke cigarettes while most of the people around me were smoking. I tasted the ones to see how it felt and thought it silly and pointless. In my early years, I drank alcohol, but I never enjoyed it a lot. I tried ganja, the cannabis at 20 when I was in the US, and I kinda liked it. Those highs made me experience my senses in different ways. So I occasionally smoked weed until I was 22. At 21, I was staying in South America, traveling around the continent. During those times, I tried chemical and psychoactive drugs a few times. I wanted to check why so many people are obsessed with it. I knew myself as a decisive person, so I was confident that I wouldn't be addicted to anything if I chose not to. I remember when I first did the cocaine. I was in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I was 21 at the time. I met two guys from Argentina on the streets. We hung out late at night. One Argentino guy and I didn't have a place to stay at the night. The other guy told us he knew a place and took us there. It kinda looked like an abandoned house with no electricity and water. They call it squat. He showed us a room we could stay in. It was a small room with the sofa and table in the middle. And there were 10 ish people already sleeping on the floor and a cat. I sat on the couch looking at the room. Everybody was sleeping, girls and boys. The Argentino guy fell asleep. Everyone seemed tired and a cat was walking around. I didn't feel sleepy so I just stayed awake. In the morning, someone came from the door. He was a tall Brazilian guy, about 190 cm, with big fuzzy orangey hair and a black beard. He looked around the room and noticed I was awake, but he never looked at me and went out. A few minutes later, he entered again, gave me a book without looking at me, and went out again. It was an erotic comic, so I was checking out the comic and spacing out, and he entered again. He sat next to me with no words and no look, and he pulled out cocaine and the wallet from his pocket and started to roll the money, and began to snort cocaine. He gave his cocaine and the rolled cash to me, and he was still not looking at me. And everyone was still sleeping on the floor except for two of us. I snorted it like he did, and I understood why so many people are obsessed with cocaine, and I also felt how toxic it is to our body. Months later, I was in Amazon, Peru. I stayed at Iquitos and spent a week in the rainforest. I met a shaman there and he introduced me to the ayahuasca. For those who may not heard about ayahuasca, it is a shamanic drink from the indigenous tribes of Amazon. It is a plant-based brew and the name ayahuasca means vine of the soul. It was the most intense experience I had at the time. The visions and senses this ayahuasca unlocks were highly compelling. But I was spiritually shallow until then. I was spiritually ignorant to notice what kind of impact they had on my mind and body to tripping. It took me following years of journey to analyze those experiences. As I mentioned in one of my videos, I started questioning essential truths in life, and I started my journey to find the answers to these questions. My lifestyle changed significantly during those times. I became vegan. Occasionally have lacked of vegetarian diets, but mostly vegan. I no longer consume any natural chemical drugs that affect my mind. Even when I become sick, I haven't taken any pills since then. I learned and realized animals have spirits just like us, and their resentment when killed is very toxic for our energy and karma. Those psychoactive experiences gave me a hint that our potential is locked in most situations. But deep down in my soul, I knew those were not the right way to unlock them. 
When I came to stay in the mountains of Korea at 23, I started fasting for a week to purify my body first. As I mentioned before, I deciphered Eastern philosophy and I was introduced to one particular training my first year at the mountain. It was a type of moxibustion. It's a therapy that consists of burning dried mugwort herbs at particular points on the body. Modern days, they use a small amount of the herb and meta plate in the bottom to reduce the pain. But the one I was introduced to was to use a large amount of the herb that burns for 5 to 25 minutes and burn it right on your skin without the plate. You burn it on your tanjan, which is the energy center of our body. It is also known as the field of elixir. This training is extremely painful, but it said the heat of the fire will circulate your body, purify your system, receive energies through the tanjan, and strengthen your spiritual power. I did it for about 3 hours a day for a month. I did this 3 times in 2 years. It was excruciating, but I tried to remain unperturbed by the pain. Even after the burning, it was hard to sleep because of the pain. It said when you reach some point, you will no longer feel the pain but just the comforting warmth while it burns. I wasn't sure if it was true at the beginning, but I no longer felt the pain and just the pleasant warmth of my tanjan at some point. I wasn't sure if it was an effect of this training, but in the following few months, I saw my previous life in my dream for the first time. After more studies and spending years in the mountains and the temple learning Eastern philosophies and Buddhism, I isolated myself in the wilderness of the mountains for six months. During this time, I was constantly meditating, except for a time I fall asleep and eat a minimal amount. In this cultivation, I experienced a few states that I call genuine high and I know there are much higher states those ancient masters have reached. These eyes are different from ones you can reach through any psychoactive drugs, both chemical and natural ones. Those are easy and shallow ways to experience highs in the wrong way, and I didn't realize this when I was spiritually shallow and ignorant. These ways let other evil spirits enter your mind. They may seem beautiful and godlike, but they are not. The word Ma contains the word Ma in East Asia. And these characters are created by wise sages from ancient times. A lot of them have hidden meanings behind it. Not many people decipher them these days, but I found them surprisingly profound many times. Ma means the evil. And this word is created with combinations of the word Ma, the cannabis, and Kri, the ghost. And this clearly makes sense when your spirit is pure and sober. But when it's not pure and sober, it's hard to notice what kind of spirit impacts your mind. Before you experience the other edge of the world, it's hard to understand the difference between the world you already know. For example, I grew up in the cities and I've been living in the mountains since I was 23. Before then, I didn't know how stuffy the city's air was. Also, I've been vegetarian and vegan since I was 22. So for 16 years now. Also, I've been sober since then. I remember after a few years of eating vegan diets, I start to notice how bad people smelled, which I didn't notice when I was consuming foods like others. So is the highs I experienced. Before I cultivated years to experience those true high states, I didn't know the highs I experienced with psychoactive drugs and cannabis were malevolent. There is a phrase called Kunmeng Musa. This means a crowd of blinds touch the elephant. One day king showed an elephant to the blinds, Hence the blinds touched the elephant, and the king asked them what it looked like. And all of them said the different shapes of the elephant according to the part of the elephant's body each touched. And this phrase is used to warn people that the knowledge and the experience they think they know can be only a fragment of the truth. Wise sages, including Buddha from ancient era, cultivated many years and lives to unlock their potential and rich wisdom. They devoted heart to purifying their spirit and the body and maintaining that state. It is not that they didn't know the easy ways, it was because that was the only way, the right way. It is easy and entertaining to get high with those materials, but if you truly want to elevate your spirit to a higher level, those things must be out of your sight and start working on keeping your mind sober and pure. There are many cases of spiritual experiences through outer help, meaning psychoactive drugs, medications, and natural plants, and there are people training using these methods, but they are not the right way. They are extremely dangerous in a spiritual sense.
It's been 16 years since I stayed sober. Staying sober doesn't entertain you, but it keeps you in a pure and sharp state, and it helps you how you see the world. Most importantly, right or wrong, good and evil. Honing your mind and body sober is a fundamental first step to starting your spiritual journey. Afterward, you can study, meditate, or train to enter deeper states. The frequency of your soul can receive the proper guidance from the right gods only when you are sober. You get more and more distant from the meaningless distractions when your sobriety gets fermented longer. And you'll no longer be interested in instant pleasures and rudimentary levels of highs. As your spiritual power grows in your sobriety, you aim to unlock your true potential and accomplish your spiritual mission. I'm not a master or anything, I'm just someone on this path sharing my journey, hoping it might help some of you. I wish this video was helpful for anyone who is trying to find right way on their journey.